Hello, my name is Jason. I'm a metal fabrication instructor at BCIT at the Burnaby campus. Today I'm going to show you how to safely and properly set up a mobile oxyacetylene torch setup. There are many steps to be taken to properly assemble this and safely and they should be um, done in a certain order. So I'm going to take you step by step through this. Uh, the first one, again, dealing with safety, is we have to make sure that the bottles are secure. Uh, in this cart, they are on a wheeled cart, but there is also a chain wrapped around securing these bottles to make sure that they won't fall over. Uh, you definitely don't want a compressed cylinder like this falling over. It could be uh, very dangerous for everybody around you and including yourself. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is we want to crack the cylinders. So I'm just going to quickly open and close the valve on the oxygen and on the acetylene. And primarily this is to make sure that there is no dust or debris in the orifices where we are going to connect up the regulators. So now that that is done, I am going to proceed to the next step and that will be to attach the regulators. First, I'm going to attach the oxygen one. It is the one that with the green dial on it. And then I'm going to attach the acetylene one. As you can see, the acetylene one has a red dial on it. Now I'm just going to take a wrench and tighten them. They don't need to be super tight, but they should be quite snug. We will check for leaks later and find out if there are any leaks where the regulator seats with the valve. Now that I have the regulators on, I am going to add what's called the RFCB, which is a reverse flow check valve. It prevents anything, if the fire does start in the hose or line, it prevents it from getting back into the tank. So I'm going to put these one on the same. As you can see, there's a green stripe on this one, so it will go on the oxygen regulator. And the one with the red stripe will go on the acetylene regulator. And again, I'll have to take a wrench and tighten these on as well. There we go. Now that I've got those on, I can now attach the hose. You can see that the hose is color coordinated red for oxy, or sorry, red for fuel, fire, and green for the oxygen. Now it doesn't matter which way you put the hoses on at this point in time, both ends are the exact same. So I'm just gonna pick this end and put it on. And just like the other connections, I'm going to tighten up with a wrench. Okay. Now what I need to do is back off the pressure. And that's what this screw and this screw is for. If I turn them counterclockwise all the way out, it takes any pressure out of the regulators themselves. So that way, when I turn on the tanks, it doesn't shoot a big burst of pressurized oxygen or acetylene. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the valves knowing that my pressure is turned off. So what I need to do is purge the lines. We don't know what's inside the lines. There could be some sort of gas that might react with the oxygen or the acetylene once we start a flame. So what I wanna do is just make sure to get everything 
out of the lines that's not supposed to be there and only get the gases that are supposed to be in there. So I'll turn the oxygen on first, and then I'm gonna turn the acetylene on. So now I'm gonna slowly turn up my pressure on the oxygen until it reads on a dial and then turn it off. And the same for the acetylene. Turn them both off. So now the only thing that's in the lines is the gas that's supposed to be in there. Now I'm gonna put on another set of RFCVs, reverse flow check valves. There we go. Now you probably noticed that I haven't tightened these with wrenches yet. I find it a little bit simpler to get both these connections done before I take a wrench to it. There we go. Now I've got all my connections hooked up. Now what I want to do is set my working pressure. My working pressure for the oxygen is going to be around 35 to 40, and my working pressure for the acetylene is going to be between 5 and 7. So I'm going to set those now. Now what I'm going to do is set my working pressure for the oxygen. This gauge here tells me how much is in the tank. This gauge will climb as I raise the pressure that will go out the line to the torch. So I open the valve. Oop and I turn it clockwise to turn the pressure up and you'll see this needle start moving. And I'm gonna get it up to 40 and I'm good. And now I'm gonna do the exact same with the acetylene bottle, but yet I won't set it to 40, I'm only gonna set it to five. So now everything from the tank to the torch is now pressurized to a working pressure. Now what I need to do is do a leak test. Uh, any soapy water will do, anything that bubbles up quite easily. Uh, somebody might have done this before uh, with a leaky tire on your car or a leaky tire on a kid's bike or something like that. Uh, what we use here is Windex. So I'm just going to lightly spray all the connections and see if it bubbles. and I don't see any bubbles forming, so that leads me to believe that I don't have any leaks. So that's good. Now I can grab my striker and light up a neutral flame and start cutting some material.